So for those of you who have seen the movie The Martian starring Matt Damon, the red planet is prime colonizing space and it's pretty bearable if you've got a healthy dose of disco music. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight I'm joined by Mars One astronaut hopeful uh, as well as researcher with the Quantum Research Group at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, Adriana Marer. She's my guest. She joins me to discuss a venture to the unknown and what Elon Musk describes as the greatest human adventure ever. Adriana Marer, you and I have spoken about this before, but for those who don't know, what is the big plan? So, in my opinion, the Mars One project is the most ambitious and exciting plan that humanity has ever proposed. So, first and foremost, I feel extraordinarily lucky to be alive at this precise moment. Uh, the plan is to establish a human settlement on the surface of Mars in the next decade um, and to demonstrate livability there. Okay, so a little bit like Matt Damon did in The Marsh, in a movie which you saw two dozen times? Indeed, although I'm now I'm, uh, totally gripped by the new National Geographic Mars series, so I encourage people <laughs> to watch that also. Uh, well, what, what is your interest? I mean, you are a scientist by training, but uh, this is a one-way ticket uh, as things stand at the moment, with no prospect of ever returning to planet Earth. Well, what's the attraction for you? Well, if I had to give a one-word answer, it would be curiosity. I think as humans... What we are is that we are people who ask questions and explore. So I feel like this is an extension of, of being a human. Um, this is the next frontier. We've explored most of the surface of the Earth, and uh, the next uh, land to be discovered is indeed the next door neighbor planet Mars. Um, Christopher Columbus, uh, when he left uh, Cadiz, I think it was way back whenever it was that he went off to go and uh, discover America, had no idea if he'd ever be coming back. Do you feel a little bit like that, as if it's 1452 all over again? Yes, I think there are many parallels that can be drawn between the, the discoveries of New World and the rise of empires that have happened in the past. Um, my ancestors, in fact, were survivors of what was then what became a one-way trip. They were French Huguenot refugees from France who made their way to the Netherlands and came down to the Cape in 1688. Uh, so that was a one-way trip. And I believe that we are all survivors of one-way trips in some sense or another, whether it was our parents or further back. Um, and I believe that this kind of move is not only exciting for me personally, but necessary for humanity uh, and our society in general. We'll talk about that in just a moment. The 1960s is very much characterized by the, the state's drive for the moon. And we saw the Chinese were very interested in it. The Russians were very interested in the Americans. Run, uh, won the, the race to the moon. And Neil Armstrong, of course, was the first person to set foot on, 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 on the moon. When we look at the race to get to Mars first, you're not part of the only project. There's several projects underway to try and get humanity onto Mars. No, indeed. So firstly, to mention something about the, the race during the um, late 60s to get to the moon. So as a result of the inspiration that uh, many children and teenagers felt on seeing the first human stepping on the moon, the number of students enrolling in science, engineering and technology degrees spiked. And there are correlations then with the developments in technology that happened subsequently, including the mobile phone, the internet, the personal computer. So I believe we cannot underestimate the importance of inspiration mm -hmm. uh, with respect to explorers going further than ever before and stimulating the development of innovations that we could not have conceived of before that. So the players in the game at the moment are a combination of mostly private and also um, government agencies. So NASA has announced plans to send return crewed missions in the 2030. SpaceX has announced plans to send crews in 2025. Lockheed Martin has announced plans to send crews in 2028. And Boeing subsequently announced that they plan to beat SpaceX to it. Um, so the race is back on. But uh, actually, I envisage more of a sort of public-private partnership and a collaborative uh, effort to, to make this giant leap for mankind, uh, in contrast to what we saw with the moon landing. Uh, what, what group are you part of? So the Mars One project was established in um, 2011 and we're, we're the first group to announce plans to send crews to Mars. 
uh, given that the technology used would be currently existing technology, the mission was uh, proposed as a one-way trip. But of course, the priority of the explorers living on the surface of Mars will be to develop, develop the fuel manufacturing facilities and the infrastructure necessary for others to return. Okay, now when we last spoke, there was a probe, an explorer probe that was due to land on Mars on the evening that you and I spoke. Uh, did it, it, has it been found yet? Because this thing entered the, the, the Martian space and, as far as I know, disappeared. Yes, so they've located the impact site, so unfortunately that lander was not successful. The orbital mission, however, um, was successful. And there are a number of pieces of equipment on Mars either still functioning or reached the end of their lifetime, uh, which could possibly contribute to the, the infrastructure of the settlement if, if the location happens to be nearby, as Matt Damon did in the Martian, to collect and retrieve pieces of uh, equipment that had previously been landed on the surface. So statistically, landing is indeed the most uh, risky part of the business. Of course, launch also. And the sustainability of the settlement, which was not something at all uh, focused on in the Martian, would be, of course, the most challenging part. And for me, I think the technology uh, we essentially have, it's rather the, the psychological element, the human element that is, is the main unknown at the moment. If you are successful as things are proposed at the moment, you're one of, what, two women on a short list of 100 potential candidates to be on the first trip to Mars. Um, what are the odds of you being selected? Where are you in the process? Um, the Mars One project has said from the beginning that there will be half men, half women. So the 100 constitute uh, constituted by 50 men and 50 women okay. from all around the planet. There are two women from Africa ah, currently, right, so okay. I believe chances of getting through are 100% um, because uh, it would be a an unlikely outcome that they would not have at least one woman from Africa. And being a scientist, I think I'm well positioned um, to be one of the 24, which we hope will be selected next year. So those dates have not yet been released. But there has been an update in the last few weeks that Mars One, the Mars One project, is now listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and a successful um, investment has been um, agreed upon and signed. And that's an indication that the ball is rolling and we are gearing up for the final selection, which we hope will take place next year. I mean, it's an extraordinary prospect as things stand uh, that you could very well blast off towards space in, is it what, 2025? Is that the, 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 the target date? Because as the planets move, you've also got to time your departure uh, to make your rendezvous appropriately, don't you? Yes, so the launch opportunity, also called the home and transfer orbit opportunity, takes or happens every 26 months. So that's why these launch dates are staggered by around two years. The Mars One project plans to launch in 2026, um, but SpaceX has uh, announced plans for 2025. So we'll have to uh, see who gets there first. Um, and uh, one looks at it and one looks at the considerable cost and yes there's a Frankfurt listing, yes Elon Musk is in the race, yes Lockheed Martin is there and NASA is there. Um, surely one envisages as time goes by that there is a greater level of collaboration rather than competition to get there or is this more about ego than it is about the advancement of humanity in a different, uh, in a different sphere? Um, I believe and I hope that this is this mission would be in stark contrast to the kind of muscle flexing activity that was behind the moon landing, in my opinion. Um, the fact that we are endeavoring to set up a sustainable settlement on the surface of Mars um, is, is the, the prime difference, I would say, in strategy there. So SpaceX plans to land as a private entity the first cargo mission on the surface of Mars in 2018. They plan to do this in partnership with NASA. So while SpaceX will fund the entire mission, uh, NASA will contribute in uh, consultation and expertise, etc. So I think um, this is maybe some kind of precursor, perhaps, of the kind of private public partnership that we will see hopefully uh, expanding our society off of Earth. And I do believe the grand scale of this endeavor, not just going to Mars and coming back, but going there to stay, is really something that we can only achieve through the collaboration uh, between all of us humans here on Earth at the end of the day. For most of us, this is the stuff of science fiction. The surface of Mars looks uninhabitable. There's no potable water that we are aware of uh, on the surface of Mars. Um, as a scientist, how do you rationalize what must be quite an emotional decision-making process? Well, let's get the science out the way first. So I'm 
um, what we've been doing in the International Space Station for the last few decades is to practice to sustain human life in extreme conditions, off-Earth off conditions. So, in fact, uh, sustaining life um, on the surface of Mars will be easier to some extent in terms of being able to extract resources from the surface once the basic infrastructure has been set up. So a crucial part of the mission is the fact that the Curiosity rover has identified between 2 to 3% H2O in the surface sand of all of the samples it's analyzed. So being able to extract this water means we'll be able to extract oxygen from this water, and those are the two, of course, uh, crucial components to having a sustainable settlement on the surface of Mars, along with innovations like 3D printing. Uh, this will um, take us towards you know, having the settlement increasingly independent from Earth. Uh, the, Mars rover, um, so, would, the Mars rover would identify H2O from my tap as H2O. It would also uh, identify water from acid mine drainage, for example, as H2O. How do you know it's drinkable? Nobody's brought a sample back to taste, have they? Oh, we can analyze the chem chemical composition and bring along the infrastructure to distill and purify the water from this liquid or ice substance that has been identified. That's no problem. Yeah, I mean, as, as you mentioned, the personal issues are, are going to be much greater. So uh, we can't predict how the human mind will respond to being 200 million kilometers away from not only <laughs> everything that that individual has ever known, but everything that any individual has ever known. Um, and I think the correct people for this kind of mission are the ones who are <laughs> that this kind of mission is for them. I think people who feel that this goal of establishing a settlement on the surface of Mars is somehow aligned with what they have been doing on Earth so far. So I think although the um, criteria for volunteers by the Mars One project uh, were simply to be over the age of 18, I mean, we've gone through a number of different uh, rounds with different associated challenges involved, um, but in the end, organically, the group of people left amongst the 100 are largely scientists, engineers, and medics. And I believe this is because we envisage a continuation of our lives as humans and professionals uh, in this new world. When, is, when do you find out whether you're one of the final 24 to, to be on that shortlist to go? Uh, those dates have not yet been announced. So watch the space, as I say. People are welcome to check my Twitter and Facebook updates for that information. You can also um, register as a supporter on the Mars One website and receive monthly updates. Uh, Adriana Moria, I mean, I think you're crazy, but I think you know that. Uh, but I wish you luck. It's uh, very exciting. Uh, they would have said that to Columbus. They would have said it to Neil Armstrong. And Adriana Moria could be one of the very first people from Earth to set foot on Mars. Mars One astronaut hopeful Adriana Morea joining us this evening on The Moneymaker. She's a researcher with the Quantum Research Group at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. More dreamers, adventurers and crazy ventures next time on The Moneymakers. Till then, have yourselves a very good evening. Good night.